Hello. <clears throat> okay, let me try it again. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. Thank you so much for being here. I just, uh, let me see here. Yes, okay, I did. I'm glad I noticed that my mic was muted. All right, very good. Uh, let me see who was here first. Ah, Mary H., thank you so much for being here first. You could have been any place else in the world and you decided to hang out here. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I just thought about a quote from um, oh Jennifer Lewis, the great Jennifer Lewis, the black mother of Hollywood, as she refers to herself. She has played the mother for several... Um, Black uh, actors, actresses. So she has been dubbed the Black Mother of Hollywood. Gotta love Jennifer Lewis. Okay, thank you. Lydia Washington, uh, Love Wins Movement, Lorna Williams, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much. I'll say hi to everyone as we go along. Let's see. Sharon Lambert became a member. Thank you so much for joining. Royal Sussex. Outstanding. Greatly appreciate that. All righty then. Um, hmm, okay. We're good. And there's the slides. Now, I know I said it yesterday, but let's see if we can do it today. How about if we get out of here in about an hour? Hello, Val Rich, No BD, Denise Jones, Big Mama, and Maggie Howell, Blue Draws. Antoinette Kennedy, okay, Andrea Allen, and Helene Ferris, all right, very cool, Linda Lala, okay, um, today, uh, this is what, April 4th, this marks the tragic day that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated um, at the Lorraine uh, Motel, uh, was that in Tennessee? Memphis, right? Anyway, um, yeah, so this is uh, one of those infamous days in the history of our country, uh, in the history of the world, for that matter. So um, I couldn't say where I was at the time because I have no recollection of it. I mean, I kind of have like some very, you know, spotty memories um, but other than that, I don't have any strong memories of it. I remember at one time I, I was like telling my classmates they were going to make him president and that's why they killed him. It says April 4th is the 94th day of the year, the 95th in leap year and in the Gregorian calendar, 271 days remain until the end of the year. Wow. two hundred and 71 days, and then it'll be next year. And then, of course, there is the history of the King assassination. And for some people, it just happens to be their birthday. Today in history, yeah, 39 years of age. Wow. On April 4th, 1968, civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr., 39, was shot and killed while standing on a balcony of the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. His slang was followed by a wave of rioting, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Chicago, where among cities particularly hard hit, James Earl Ray later pled guilty to assassinating King, then spent the rest of his life claiming he'd been the victim of a setup. Yeah. Well. Oh, also on this day, uh, in 1841, President William Henry Harrison succumbed to pneumonia one month after his inaugural uh, becoming the first 
U.S. chief executive to die in office. Uh, John Tyler became the first vice president to assume the office of president after such a death. You know, what's interesting, though, is that um, was he, um, he gave the longest, the longest acceptance speech of any president. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was an inaugural address. And to show how vigorous he was, because people criticized his age and said he was too old to be president. So to show them a thing or two, he stood in the pouring rain with his hat off and, you know, just to show people what a tough guy he was. Well, it didn't take long before pneumonia set in and a month later he was dead. <laughs> I don't know why that tickles me so much. But yeah, it only took a while before pneumonia set in and then he died. So I think at the time he was the oldest president. He was the, the shortest serving president or had the shortest term of any president. And, um, and he was the first to die in the White House. So first to die, but certainly not the last. Um, anyway, that's what happened to him. Oh, well. Interesting day, April 4th. Wow. I just kind of came across all of these, and now I'm fascinated. Wow. It was this day in 1974, Hank Aaron tied Babe Ruth's record, home run record. Okay, you guys, I'm, I'm done with these. Now, all of a sudden, I didn't get fascinated. I found a new toy, and I don't want to put it down. This is interesting. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Are we still talking about the uh, president? <laughs> Are we still talking about the president? I mean, how old could he have been? All right. Let me see. William Henry Harrison. How old was he when he died? Um, old Tippecanoe. That was his uh, nickname. William Old Tippecanoe Harrison. Okay, I just, I want to check one more thing, see how old he was uh, when he died. Um, hmm? Okay. A 1773 to 1841. Yeah, he was old. <laughs> He was our oldest president at the time. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay, you guys, I'm done with that. That was interesting, though. That was a nice little, uh, what do you call it? A little uh, diversion. Wow. Well, that's what they get for calling him old, right? If they wouldn't have called him old, then he wouldn't have been trying to show out. And because he was trying to show out, well, he died in office. Huh. From March until April. Wow. Huh. Okay. I'm done with that. I keep saying that, right? So he was, uh, how old was he? 67? Anyway, all right. I was trying to do the math, but I, I can't work it out. Or maybe I can do this. How old was Benjamin Harrison when he died? He was 67. Wow, my math was good. My math was good. I can't believe it. 
I said 67, didn't I? Okay. And I didn't even have to use my fingers or toes. All right. Welcome, one and all. That was so long ago. Uh, Church, Nellie, what kind of president was Benjamin Harrison? <laughs> Uh, what kind of president was Benjamin Harrison? Just asking for a friend. Oh, well, I couldn't think of anyone else old enough that would remember that. Um, okay, so, and also, you guys, I was reminded as I was going through my archives, I was reminded about um, Julia Roberts. Well, Julia Roberts has been in the news. <laughs> oh, thank you, Church Nelly. He was forgetful. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, did you know that Julia Roberts' mother, Betty Lou Brenda, Brenda? Wow, that was her last name. Betty Lou Brenda ran an acting workshop in Atlanta. It was the only one that would allow Black students. So MLK's daughter, Yolanda, could attend. Betty and Coretta became friends, and Mrs. King later paid the hospital bill for Julia's birth. How sweet is that? I know I shared this before, but I, I like that story. Um, it just goes to show when people have things in common, um, just about anybody can become friends, right? Under all types of circumstances that... Um, would seem almost impossible, but it is. So, and of course, uh, that's in on the left side there. That was from Martin Luther King's birthday. At these two slides I had made uh, as one a long time ago. As you honor my father today, please remember to honor my mother as well. She was the architect of King's legacy and founder of the King Center which uh, she founded two months after daddy was assassinated. Without Coretta Scott King, there would be no MLK Day. So, and don't you all forget it. What is all these laugh emojis? I feel like I'm missing something. Um. <laughs> Why is Church Nelly still cussing me out? <laughs> okay, okay, let me get down to business. Like I said, we'll be out of here in an hour and a uh, half. Okay. Um, so uh, she's one of Hollywood's leading ladies, and Julia Roberts kicked back from her audacious schedule to enjoy some family time with her niece, Emma in a sweet snap shared to the young actress's Instagram account on Sunday afternoon. The 50-year-old actress appeared to be makeup free for one, I mean for the friendly game, with both Robert's women striking a similar pose between rounds of card game. Now, what was so touching about this is of course, we you know. Who doesn't love Julia Roberts, right? Well, that is very touching. But what's sad about this is that people criticize Julia Roberts for appearing without makeup. In other words, she wasn't in drag and people did not like that. And so um, it's just too bad and it's heartbreaking I want to play the sound bite, but I'm not sure that I can. Um, but uh, yeah, that I can't believe that happened. Uh, Julia Roberts is 50 years old, and she knows how old she is. She um, is not vain about her appearance, as well as she shouldn't be. I mean, after all, uh, let's face it, she is absolutely beautiful in just about any matrix you can think of. Makeup or no makeup, she's just always had. Of marrying uh oh, she's always had a certain um, advantage in life, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And anyway, um, <laughs> now, Church Nelly, you stop reading my mind. Um, but she played a character in that movie, and she had done a great job at it, too. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of too bad. Let me see if I can uh, share it with you. I'm going to check and see. Because if you haven't seen it, maybe I'll just try to, well, it's not on, I'll see if I can put it on the community tab. How's that? Mm. Well, you know what? I don't actually see her. Um, really? Did she put it on her Instagram? Oh, it's on Emma Roberts' uh, Instagram. I think it's on Emma's. Yeah, her niece posted it. And um, anyway, that's when the nightmare started. I think she looks fine. I think she's um, she looks beautiful. And unfortunately, uh, people decided to come for Julia Roberts for daring to be herself. Okay, so anyway, I'm just going to take my chances and go ahead and play this because I think it's an important lesson that everybody um, needs to, to learn about uh, vanity and, and, and also about how we talk about people on these uh, websites, on these uh, platforms. And that's what the problem is, is that people just kind of laid into her uh, for for no apparent reason other than they, you know, it's 2024 and everybody is a flipping critic. This has got to stop. So, okay, here goes. Uh-oh. From one, I posted a picture of my niece and I from one weekend morning. She slept over and we got up and we're having tea and playing cards and having this beautiful morning. It was great. I felt great about it. And my sweet little niece reposted it a couple of days later. And interesting things happened. The amount of people that felt absolutely required to talk about how terrible I looked in the picture. That I'm not aging well, that I look like a man. Why would I even post a picture like this when I look that terrible? People saying, God, I didn't even recognize her. This is what she looks like. And then the fights that break out within the comments where someone says, you should be nice. Why should I be nice? She looks terrible. And people start fighting within the comments. I was amazed at what that made me feel. And I'm a 50-year-old woman, and I know who I am. And still, my feelings got hurt. I was so hurt that people couldn't see the point of it, the sweetness of it, the absolute shining joy of that photo. And I thought, God, what if I was 15? That's just devastating. And it really made me see all the things about hearts and clicks and likes. And you realize there is something neurological about this whole system. It was fascinating to me, and I think it taught me a lot about being a young person in today's society. Okay, so there you go. By the way, you guys, I have posted a Sussex Friendly space at the top of the chat. Uh, Love wins movement. When you all need some positive uh, Sussex Friendly um, material throughout your day, there's a good place to go. Um, while you're, I guess, like, you know, just chilling or whatever. Because sometimes, as you know, these topics and issues and things can be very stressful. And, um, you know, there's so many great Sussex-friendly spaces that you can turn to. Um, and you're like, oh, okay, I've seen this one. I've seen that one. Well, uh, make sure you add that to your list, okay? So it is called Love Wins Movement. Again, that is a Sussex-friendly space. 
Um, but yeah, that that was just so heartbreaking. Julia Roberts was like, they just missed the sweetness of the moment. I hate that. I really do hate that people went there. I mean, look at that. I mean, shouldn't people be satisfied? Shouldn't we just be happy that uh, Julia is surrounded with family, friends, loved ones, friends that are family? Can't we just be happy for her? You know, as far as we know, she's she's happy and healthy. But instead, there's a sweet little photo of herself and her niece and uh, her niece slept over and, and you know, um, they have so much in common. I think the niece is an actress or whatever. Uh, yeah, why isn't that good enough? Why do we have to uh, take this moment and turn it into something that it wasn't meant to be? Why? And so, you know, Julia Roberts don't mess with anybody. If she was, I'd be the first person to drag her. But she don't bother nobody. She's just mad at her business. So there you go. Uh, yes, uh, Sandra Gonzalez says, people have lost all respect and manners. You can say that again. And just to, to uh, show you that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, let me see. I don't think that's the proper segue. Never mind. Never mind. I mean, but of course, you, this is why um, I think Royal Sussex is a very important platform because uh, <laughs> Okay, let me try that again. This is why I think uh, Royal Sussex is such a very important platform because you don't have any of that kind of nonsense over here. As a matter of fact, I think that we should, um, what do you call it? Um, I think we should go to Kensington Palace for comment uh, because uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Kensington Palace. Well, obviously it'd be, um, I would love to have met her um, and and she's obviously, she's, a, she's an inspirational woman to, to look up to, um, obviously on the, to this day and, you know, going forward and things. You know, it is, you know, it's a wonderful family. The, the members who I've, who I've met have achieved a lot and, you know, very inspirational. So, um, yeah, I do. You see what I mean? Now, how come everybody can't be refined and sophisticated like we are? <laughs> I mean, after all, we have never dragged anybody who didn't have it coming. So, but uh, everybody loves Julia Roberts. Anyway, <laughs> that was an interesting segue, wasn't it? Uh, highly improbable and definitely unlikely, but there you have it. Check this out. Walk through the, is it Prec classroom uh, at my center today and notice the teacher has Meghan Markle and Princess Diana on her Women's History <gasps> Month wall. Uh, love it. Sussex Squad, Women's History Month, Girl Power. Yes, and right there you can see the uh, photos of an astronaut, Couple of princesses, uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Um, oh, let's see here. Um, oh, the Vice President Kamala Harris, Supreme Court Justice Sandra Sotomayor. Uh, let me see here. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh, Bessie Coleman, the pilot. Wow. And Dr. Maya Angelou, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Yeah, you see that in the corner, that's Dr. Maya Angelou. Uh, let me see, who else? Harriet Tubman. Um, Anne Frank. 
and uh, the artist, what, Frida Kahlo. Oh, and and uh, you know uh, uh, Greta, 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 Greta Van Susteren. No, that ain't her name. That's the news lady, uh, Greta Thunberg. Yeah, that's it. Oh, there's two. Okay, Jameson, the astronaut. I don't recognize that other one, and I don't know who the ballet dancer is, but uh, neat girl power. What a nice thing to see. Just randomly walk through, and there it is. I wonder if we should reach out to Kensington. Well, obviously, it'd be. Okay, probably not. Probably not a good time for that. <laughs> Wait, I just noticed that Catherine the Great is not up there. Oh, my goodness. I wonder how she feels about that. Maybe we should reach out to Kensington Palace. Well, obviously, it'd be. Yeah, that's enough, girl. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, moving on. Okay, so today seems like a day when there was just a bunch of these reimagined images of Megan. You know, I like to share all the ones that I find. This one, you know, Megan looks great, right? Uh, but some of those faces in the crowd, I'm telling you, AI has a problem. Uh, the hands, the faces, a lot of uh, body parts just seem to merge so as much, this is what I'm telling you guys. You know how they keep saying, oh, AI is taking over. A don't worry about it. Please don't worry about it. You're worrying about something that, number one, you can't control. And number two, uh, I don't think it's as scary. I mean, they can't even put faces together. If these AI people were plastic surgeons, uh, they'd create a new species. So I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, AI is not going to be the end all be all. Trust me when I say that. They said the same thing. If you look at any of those, uh, like videos, those interviews from years ago, they asked people in the 1960s or the 1950s, they say, well, I think robots are going to take over and we're all going to be flying from one place to the other. There won't be any automobiles. And, um, of course, there won't be a black president. We won't have any of that. You know, that kind of stuff they used to say. <laughs> and as you can see, they got a lot of that stuff wrong. So don't worry about this AI stuff. Remember Y2K? They thought planes were going to fall out of the sky. Everything was just going to stop working. The power would go down and people were paying all that money to get their uh, equipment up to date. And people were, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this Y2K. And nothing happened. See what I mean? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Franklin Roosevelt said that. The world is not any worse off than it's ever been. You know, in the history of the world, there has always been war someplace. Um, historians say that there was only a small window of time throughout history when there wasn't some war waging someplace. Whether it was a big war or a little war, there's always been war. So nothing's any worse. People are living longer, right? And uh, there's a lot of good things going on, so I just refuse to get into that whole, oh, the world is spinning out of control. Just like a friend of mine told me that the American government, the United States, is, is the government is not working. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It really is. When it comes to the way the government operates, the founding fathers wanted a system of co-equal branches of government. We have that. They wanted uh, people to bargain and trade and make deals to get things that they wanted. And that's exactly what happens in Congress. We got that. Um, and, of course, uh, government for the people, by the people, and of the people. Yeah, okay, we're working on that one, but uh, we'll get there. So, again, you guys, stop these dreadful thoughts. Oh, the migrants are coming. Now, I'm telling you guys, yes, it is an issue. But 
if they came up with all that money for the global pandemic, they can deal with the migrants. And the whole thing is if they want to. There's a lot of things they could do if they want to do it. And the only way to make it happen is to be vocal and to exercise your right to vote. Right? All right. So so let it go. It's, it's not uh, the end of the world as we know it. When things really get bad, I promise you, you won't be here to know the difference. And when things really get bad, your children and your children's children won't be here to know the difference. All right? That's the truth. So we've had a global pandemic before. We had one again. And there may be one in the future. But in the meantime, live your life. God has given you a gift, and that gift is your life. So go live your life. A very wise person once said that to me because I was sitting there, oh, the, the war in Iraq and all that kind of stuff. And you know what? They were right, what, 20, 30 years ago? And they're still correct today. So remember I said that. Okay, so I got rid of all those weird-looking people, and I just thought I would let our girl shine. And shine she does. Stunning, beautiful, gorgeous. Now, I don't know where the, that other thing came from. I don't know where this came from. But I love this look for the Sussexes. I love this look for them. You know they could pull that off. I love that look for them. There they are in some... Is that Montecito? Is that the Monte, Montecito Manor? In Montecito, Santa Barbara, California, USA, where there are no leaks in Montecito? Oh, my God. They could really pull that look off. I love it. I love that for them. That is hot. But just when you thought it couldn't get any better, ta-da! Now, it is a bit risque and low cut. I don't know where they're headed to. It looks like they're walking through a park or maybe it's the Buckingham Palace Garden Party. I don't know. But... Um, I'm telling you, that is a good look for them. And by the way, whoever made these, thank you for making these. I love them. I don't know who made them, but very cool. Very, very cool. Yes, my, I absolutely love wins. It is stunning. Absolutely stunning. But wait, there's more. Ah, hoo, hoo, hoo. Uh, shaken, not stirred, huh? Huh? It is uh, 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 007 and his femme fatale. Yes. Now they they look like a uh, like they're starring in their own spy movie. License to thrill. Yes, yes, queen. Yes, yes, queen. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I got one more for you. This is the last one. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Nice. I love the train, right? And he's wearing tails. Okay, it's a black tie with tails, but it's okay. He looks like he's got tail. Okay. Good look for him. Good look for her. It's a good look. Wow. Wow. This is outstanding. Well, you guys, um, let's say we do this again tomorrow. I, I could just I could just sit here and uh just take it in. I love it. I love it. Huh? Huh? Wow. Uh, Jules Ryder, thank you so much. Uh, I I thought I was rather ignorant and crude, but thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I I mean we 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 have our laughs and everything, but there's there's no hate here at uh, Royal Sussex. I think um, we're we're all um, 
in the same boat with that one. It says, Baron, you're the most respectful YouTuber here. When I saw your channel, I was hooked. You're an amazing person, and I love the way you protect Harry, Megan, and their kids. Keep up the good work, Baron. Thank you so much for that. And as always, thank you for watching. Royal Sussex. Okay. Yeah. What what do you say we just look at these the rest of the time, huh? Huh? I I don't know which one I like the most. I'm gonna say it's probably this one, followed by oh I don't know. I just know this one is my favorite. The other ones I kind of like those equally. But um, oh man, I tell you. And that Megan has not uh presented any awards. Uh, since they left Narnia is unfortunate. I would love to see that. I would love to see Megan uh, do a red carpet and present an award. Um, now, this little curiosity right here, I'm just sharing it with you. There was a video that I came across on Facebook, and I'm so rarely on Facebook. But if you take a look at those and uh, take your time, Basic is just that means that you or I could do that um, as amateurs and then simple with a little extra, I guess, thought we might be able to do that. And then, of course, there's better. Now, mind you, they had at a little I think they speeded up or sped up the film or whatever. And so the video Obviously, it was done over a longer period of time, but the person had these, I guess, colored pencils, and they just scratched and scratched at the paper and created um, the art, right? So the better, now that is truly when you know that someone has skills. But then take a look at the last wine glass, and you'll see where it says artist. I don't know if you noticed this, but there are two faces staring at each other you see that yes there is a couple there and the higher splash i suppose that is the guy and the lower splash i suppose that's the girl or a tall person and a short person of the same gender uh either way i thought that was so cool and then also on the right side again you could see basic simple, and of course, beta. And then of course, uh, by the way, that white thing there, that is the pencil, or I don't know if it was a pencil, but that's what they used to uh, create the sketch. But these were all sketched with a camera uh, watching, and, and I just thought it was incredible. Must be nice to have that kind of skill, huh? Yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Oh, Mimi D, you see the face? All right, Lucy Wynn sees it. Hey, Deborah Anderson, let me see. Okay, anyway, I thought these was cool. I thought I would share them with you. And and notice, too, the Better Cherries actually has a chateau, a shadow, rather, um, whereas the other ones doesn't. That is incredible. So. And it looks like the lips are just, you know, looks like cherry lip gloss or whatever lip gloss. So cool. To have that kind of skill, that is incredible. Now, uh, Meghan Markle breaks major rule on visit to Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. Meghan Markle made a surprise visit. Okay, we know that. Now, you guys, I fought. And I fought and I fought. I said, you know what? I am not going to give them the clicks. I'm not reading that article. And I did not. But Henry VIII had something to say about it. Henry VIII, who uh, also has a channel, but because of the birth of a beautiful child, she has taken some time away from making videos. But I tell you, uh, she and I think her mom's name was Kelly. Oh, my goodness, they were so good. Ma and daughter, um, they would just talk about the the issues and things of the day with the Sussexes. 
and it was phenomenal. And I can't wait for them to come back. But anyway, Henry the Eighth, uh, she says, good thing she doesn't work for them anymore. Good thing she doesn't work for them anymore. Also, the press treatment of Meghan Markle has routinely proved that royal protocol is a made-up term that can be used to bash whichever female royal the press is currently upset with. It doesn't exist. And that is a fact. This whole business about protocol, protocol is in reference to when there is a military component. Like if there's a state visit, right? Um, the queen or now the king, the head of the armed forces and all that kind of stuff. So yes, when they are doing those types of things where they welcome a, the leader of another country or an ambassador, of course, there are some very strict protocols. So people use the term protocol in places where it does not belong. There is tradition. There is also the idea that, okay, so one of the last things I heard about this whole protocol business, they said the other thing that Megan did was, I think it was uh, Constance, uh, what's her name? Meredith Constance. She said that the whole idea that the pink nail polish or nail varnish with the French tips, the queen would not approve of that. Okay, first of all, Queen Elizabeth is dead, right? Second of all, if the queen doesn't approve of something, fine, she doesn't approve or she did not approve. And so that is the queen's desire, the queen's wishes, the queen's thoughts about a matter. But the queen did not outlaw anything, right? It was just the queen preferred that women wear tights. The queen preferred that nude nail polish or nail varnish was used. And, of course, dark lipstick, a uh, big no-no. Um, those kind of things. But you know what's interesting? I don't think we've ever heard that from the queen. We've heard that from the courtiers, not the queen. And because the queen either did not do this or went without that or had a preference for something else, then, of course, they would all attribute it to protocol. Just like when the queen went out for the first time with uh, Kate Middleton and Kate was wearing those skirts that uh, when she sat down, they went up. When she stood up, they went up. Every time you saw her, her skirts or her dress was always someplace it shouldn't be. And so I don't recall them saying that she violated any protocol. As a matter of fact, I think some of the photographers rather liked it. But enters the black woman. Uh, one of the people contributing said that Megan runs the risk of looking vulgar wearing that uh, one strap dress. And then, of course, the Sussex squad began pulling out photos of everybody in a one strap, including Queen Elizabeth. But nobody referred to the queen as vulgar. Nobody called Kate vulgar. Okay, I, okay. Well, anyway, in that situation, uh, nobody referred to. <laughs> nobody referred to Princess Diana as vulgar. So, what's the deal? What's the deal? You guys. I hate to keep beating that drum, but it's so true. I have experienced this my entire life. It seems like anytime something has been a tradition, as soon as somebody black shows up, all of the rules start to change. All of a sudden, it's stuff that's not allowed. Like the term working royal and non-working royal. That is not a thing. That is something that was created in order to punish Harry and Meghan. Light-skinned Harry. You know, he's light-skinned Harry now. Yeah. You know, Harry will never be black, but he sure got some street creds. He is getting all the street creds that he got coming. 
because he is experiencing a certain uh, side of things that uh, wasn't supposed to happen to him. But now he's there and he can see how different people act around his wife and even around him. Things have changed. <laughs> Am I? Am I? Okay. So uh, this one right here. Okay. Oh, where? Uh, let me try this one. Okay. Uh, yeah, right here. There we go. So Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are wildly popular. That could be a problem. And that, of course, came from 2018, just after the Oceana tour. I didn't ever, uh, I didn't, I've never seen this article before, but take a look. It was just after this. This was a moment, as we discussed yesterday. This was a moment. And yes, because of this moment, it, um, it meant that some, oh, I don't know, maybe 14, 16 months later, Harry and Meghan would be running for their lives. They were just too popular. They were just too popular. And it didn't set well with the uh, firm. It really didn't. The crowds turning out in Australia to greet Meghan and Harry this week, where the couple are on a 16-day tour, are unprecedented um, at the... Oh, wait, I'm sorry, wait a minute. One, where the couple are on a 16-day tour are unprecedented. Okay, like I said... Uh, anyway, uh, at one event in Sydney... Local media estimates that the crowd of 15,000 people waited to see the couple who announced on the first day of their Australian trip that Megan was pregnant. On a trip um, to Victoria on Thursday, well-wishers started assembling as early as 5 a.m. to get a glimpse. Mm. Crowds of, the, of that size are not uh, I mean, have not appeared for Queen Elizabeth on any of her trips to Australia, which date back as far as the 1950s. And Harry and Meg Mania easily eclipsed the enthusiasm which William, uh-oh, and Kate, oh my God, uh, in 20, uh, what is that, 2104, oh, okay. Wait a minute, 2104 to Australia. Oh, that can't be right. Why does that look like that? Anyway, um, ugh, okay, never mind. I think it when I okay, never mind. It just it looks weird like that. Even the crowd pulling Prince George in tow were were received. Ah, uh, let me see. Okay, but the great popularity comes. I'm sorry, but with great popularity comes great responsibility, and enjoying and harnessing for good causes their immense star power without putting their people's noses out of joint requires sensitivity and self-control, a point that Meghan and Harry have arguably shown they don't fully understand yet. Well, now, uh, mind you, this is Tom Sykes, right? So there's going to be uh, a lot of that tone with this because this is the daily beast i believe so it does have that tone and so why don't we just leave it right there but harry and megan were incredibly popular on that trip um now that being said let me tell you guys something they said that when oprah winfrey went to australia of course that was not a royal tour but it was a talk show queen, a daytime television queen. They said that Queen Elizabeth never got the type of crowd that Oprah had. If you all did not see that, I'm telling you, Oprah in Australia was huge. You would have thought, you would have thought that it was like, um, 
um, kind of like the astronauts after the astronauts went to the moon and they would have that ticker tape parade in New York City. Um, there was not a ticker tape parade, I don't recall, but there was huge enthusiasm. They even had fireworks for Oprah. It was tremendous. And it says a lot that Harry and Meghan, as well as Oprah, has outdone everyone else in that family. And that is the truth. I'm telling you, I know it sounds weird, but Oprah was a big hit. And because the Oprah Winfrey show was so popular there, she decided that she would take the entire audience to Australia. And they went. And it was huge. I remember watching that. They were there for the whole week. It was huge. So um, the other thing that we learned this week, well, some people have learned uh, for us Americans or for anybody else who does not have a king or queen as head of state, if you do not have a country with a monarchy, um, and even if you do, even if you do, that doesn't really matter because the point is we don't have any royal family here, not officially. And because of that, we depend on captains of industry. We depend on uh, politicians. And also we depend upon celebrities to do certain things that otherwise a royal family would do, uh, like hosting events and charity functions and such. We don't have that, so we depend on other people to do that stuff. And, um, and so that takes me right to the hospital. Uh, this has happened numerous times. We don't need the royal family here to do that stuff. We have people, although I have to say one of the biggest visits that there's ever been to a hospital had to have been Princess Diana going to the hospital in Harlem. When she went to Chicago, she went to the Cook County Hospital. It was huge. Diana actually could draw a type of crowd that most people just can't. Most people just can't. That's why it was such a shock when Barack Obama uh, was running for president and all these huge crowds turned out like we had never seen before. There's some people that just have it. And it, it, it the, the royal family, they try so hard to look relevant about doing things that anybody could do. Anybody could do. Um, you know, I mean, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, they are big draws. Oh, that sounds weird. But they draw big crowds. <laughs> They're big draws. They draw big crowds. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, that one got away from me. But yeah, so Meghan and Harry are incredibly popular. And even without those titles, um, their brand, their biggest brand is Megan and Harry. That's it. That's their brand, Harry and Megan. They don't need those titles. Uh, but as those titles are a gift, I insist they never give them back. Don't give the enemy the satisfaction, I say. Now, uh, apology after Benjamin Zephania's, uh, is it Zephania? Mural removed. How does something like this happen? Well, I don't know exactly, but the council said Kears uh, inspected specific subways uh, across the city every month. And uh, when graffiti, uh, other making of, or paintings are found on subway walls, they will be removed. But Hockley's subway, where an exception, the authority added, I'm sorry, the exception. A spokesman said it would seek to add a section in Hockney to the protection order, no further mitigate uh, this happening 
again in future. So somebody messed up. Somebody messed up reacting to the mural. Uh, re, uh, I'm sorry, reacting to the re removal of the mural. One person on Facebook said it was disgusting, while others stated so sad. He was a mentor to help people on the right path. Benjamin deserves better. So, yes, he's an actor. Well, he, he died. I'm sorry. Uh, he died recently. But he was an actor, activist, writer, poet all kind of stuff. And um, in the UK, he was uh, a mentor to a lot of people. He was an inspiration to a lot of people. And he died, sadly, from cancer. And um, I think it was 56, maybe. And so the beautiful mural was just uh, etched away. Terrible thing. Uh, but yeah, this is why we can't have nice things. They say it was an accident. Okay, whatever. And this guy, I know you love him. Let me get this sound bite. Uh, what does he call himself? The, oh, I forgot. I'll see in just a second here. Oh, wait. There we go. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, my God. Happy Wednesday. And it's a tale of two work schedules. Oh, Megan has pulled an absolute power move here. Goodness knows how it didn't leak to the press. Hmm. Let's think about that for a moment. Megan has pulled an absolute power move here by visiting a children's hospital and doing the great things that you need to do with poorly children, ill children, speak to them, give them hope, treat them like humans, and of course, do nice things like reading to them. We don't want a comparison on this channel. It's not Megan versus Kate, but look at the glamour and the presence that Megan has here. She's like a film star. Oh, because guess what? She is actually a film star. Compare that to Kate's very limited schedule throughout the year, even when she is well, and you'll see a massive difference in those two personalities and how hard they want to work to bring joy to other people. That's all I'm saying. It's about what's in there, in the heart. Boom, boom, boom. And big love to all followers, including new ones in N. It's what's in the heart and how hard you want to work. I think I'm moving over to the Megan camp. What about you? Okay, so there you go. I like this guy because he has given the derangers a huge headache. And anything that rocks them back on their heels, I'm here for it. So um, I don't know what to say, derangers. Uh, take an aspirin. Now, what is going on with Doria Raglan? Why is Hello Magazine doing articles about her? Doria Raglan is every inch the doting grandmother in heartwarming photo with Prince Archie. Meghan Markle's mother, Doria, shares a close relationship with her son-in-law, Prince Harry, and her grandchildren. The Duchess of Sussex has leaned on her mother, Doria Ragland for support throughout both her pregnancies. Actually, there were three, but we're not going to talk about that. As a result, it seems Grandma Doria, as Prince Harry fondly calls her, has developed a doting relationship with her grandchildren, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. Yeah, I just realized that her grandchildren are prince and princess. Wow. Mm. Didn't see that coming, huh, Granny? Didn't see that coming, and yet here we are. How sweet. Uh, during the first pregnancy, Megan uh, chose to have her mom close by throughout, uh, with Doria even temporarily moving into Frogmore Cottage to be with uh, grandson Archie in his first weeks of life. A rare photo from um, those... Uh, Precious few weeks has been shared by Prince Harry and Meghan via their t 
tell-all Netflix docuseries in which uh, first aired in 2022, which is a puzzle why we're talking about it in 2024. Slow news cycle, huh? In a sweet photo, Doria is cradling her newborn grandson as he sleeps swaddled in several blankets. The yoga teacher looks lovingly at Archie, uh, uh, at baby Archie, as uh, she leans into her daughter. Uh, talking about this one, of course, Megan looks radiant in her candid snap, wearing a white cape top and black leggings. Her glossy raven hair falling to her shoulders in natural waves. Who writes this stuff? But yeah, that's a very sweet photo. One of my favorites, actually. Very, very sweet. Aww. And, and look at look at the, the, the furry family members. Is it Pula and Guy or Hula and Guy, whoever they are. But aw, look at how sweet. Everybody's there to um, ah, enjoy the new baby. So sweet. And right here, also the snap uh, was Prince Harry, who joined uh, Doria. I'm sorry, also in the snap was Prince Harry, who joined Doria and Megan on the sofa with an arm wrapped around each of their family's dogs, a rescue beagle named Mama Mia. Oh, that was Mama Mia. And their beloved black Labrador named Guy. It's not known who captured the sweet family moment between the Sussexes and Doria. And you ain't going to ever find out either. Oh, a theory. I like this. Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay. Yes, we have not seen those kids since Christmas. That is a puzzle, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this is just one article. There's more. Okay. Yep, yep, yeah. We couldn't wait to take up. Okay, wake up in all right. All right, so here's the other one. Meghan Markle's fashionista mother, Doria Raglan, surprises in new photo with Beyonce mom. Um again, why are we talking about Doria? I mean, I don't mind, but it just seems rather strange. Uh Doria Raglan looked every inch the proud mother when she attended a star-studded event hosted by her daughter, Meghan Markle, and son-in-law, Prince Harry, last month. In newly released images shared on social media, the yoga instructor, 67, appeared to be in great spirits as she posed with superstar Beyonce's mother, Tina Knowles. Okay, and uh, what about it? <laughs> uh, what about it? <laughs> Oh, well. Okay. So Doria's the topic of Hello Magazine. Did not see that coming. And the articles are about Doria. Sweet. And, of course, this was the event that they were referring to was the uh, Kinsey Collection at the SoFi Stadium. Yeah. And she's a fashionista. All righty then. Thank you, Hello Magazine, for some photos and information that dates as far back as 2022, 2021. <laughs> not sure. I'm not comfortable with it, but I'm not totally put off with it. I mean, I think Dory is great, and I would love for people to know her, um, you know, not just as Megan's mom, but as someone with a great deal of character and. Uh, very engaging personality, but okay. Now, uh, the insider guide to Balmoral for those who missed out on the 100-pound ticket, Robert Hardman visits the Royal Castle as it opens its doors for the first time. Well, it looks like it's happening. They have opened the doors of Balmoral. 
The tickets are 100 pounds up to 150 pounds. Uh, that includes tea. They're going to have high tea at Balmoral Castle. And uh, so remember, while we're talking about Megan and her uh, luxury brand, let us not forget that the royal family is cashing in on opening up the doors of Balmoral Castle. Let us not forget that the royal family is cashing in on all the products that are sold at all of the gift shops at all of the properties that they own or that are part of the crown estate. That's all. I'm just saying they are making money and it's okay if you're a quote unquote working Royal. Oh, wait a minute. But then that leaves out Sarah Ferguson who is no longer really a member of the family. Is she? I don't think so. But, um, oh, well, um, they did say the queen uh, made provisions for Sarah Ferguson to be buried in the official royal burial ground. So she is in a family way, not to knock Sarah Ferguson because um, she um, she has been through a lot. But I'm just saying she's not really a working royal. So see what I mean? Protocol cometh and protocol goes. Uh, how UCLA race and equity director who foundly calls Megan America's princess is spreading vile conspiracies that Kate cancer is fake while being paid 126,000 pounds to uphold compassion. So why won't the university fire him? Free speech, free speech. Uh, we don't have a Royal family. We have no official ties with a Royal family. And um, I don't know, I kind of think he might be biracial or something, and he just has some strong feelings. But uh, let me see. UCLA's HR guidelines for staff strictly prohibit the harassment of individuals on a basis of cancer-related medical conditions. Is it really that specific? While those found uh, to have breached harassment guidelines can expect disciplinary actions or what is that termination slash dismissal so apparently the daily fail is trying to get this guy fired that's what it looks like they're trying to get him terminated and over here you can see that um he seems to believe that his position is safe because instead of you know getting quiet He's actually talking a lot louder, and he's more vocal than ever. Like, for instance, it says here, uh, let me see, Miss G, uh, who has been uh, really, uh, oh, I tell you, she's, she's a very, very, uh, shall we say, loyal squatty. She says, notice how uh, male online is only harassing black people who they think are Harry and Meghan supporters. This must be the latest BS from, uh, I'm Stanley, whoever that, okay, whatever that means. Uh, little Miss Equity and Diversity prompting death threats to another person. And of course, she was tweeting about Christopher Bozzi, uh, who, well, anyway, I'll, I'll show you that one. I think I have that someplace else. But anyway, this JP guy, the one that they're trying to get terminated, he says, gaining followers like nobody's business. Thanks, Daily Mail. That's his response. Thanks, Daily Mail. <laughs> <laughs> and right there, uh, you can see. Um, oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. JP. Okay. And then right here. Okay, yeah. Oh, you know what? The profile photo is different now. See that one up there compared to this one right here. Uh, FYI, this is an American princess, Meghan Markle's stands account. Okay. All right. And um, that he had that photo on his Twitter account. And by the way, I did look at his Twitter and he is not having it. He is not having it. Oh, you know what? I don't have that anyplace else. 
Oh, you know what? I think I shared that one yesterday with Christopher Boozy. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no, that was a new tweet, actually. The Daily Mail is at it again. They now claim I am spreading scurrilous lies about Kate and that I am a staunch member of the Sussex Squad. I have never spread lies about Kate, nor am I a member of the Sussex Squad. So, you guys, this is what I think. I think they're trying to link this person and Christopher Boozy as squatties because they really just want us to go away. They don't want any of the pushback that they have been receiving thus far. So the best way to deal with it is to attempt to silence everyone. And um, anyway, that's uh, not going to work, of course. But it doesn't mean everyone who is protective of Megan, who has defended Megan, who has spoke out against the royal family or the monarchy, it does not mean that those people are squatties. It doesn't mean that they're in the Sussex squad. There is no leader of the Sussex squad. The Sussex squad is a ragtag group of people who um, have like-minded ideas about certain things, including charitable giving, philanthropy, uh, uh, hum humanitarian uh, efforts. We are like-minded about those things. And so we have taken that and, of course, our love and, com and compassion for the Sussexes, and we have channeled it and focused it into a way that we can speak out or speak up for them and also uh, support causes that are near and dear to our hearts because likewise they're near and dear to Harry and Meghan. And that's it. There is no leader. Uh, it, there's just a bunch of people that feel a certain way. And with that, you guys, guess what? I'm done. So it wasn't exactly an hour. It was an hour and 14 minutes. Uh, but thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, of course, for your generous contribution. Thank you, moderators, for keeping this a safe space as per usual. Uh, this has not, not been a Mark Goodson or a Bill Totson production. I don't even know who they are. Uh, and, of course, when you see our queens, it is time to go. And you know what I mean. And our last word for the day is no bad energy. All right. Love you guys. See you tomorrow.